Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go, specifically how to access PostgreSQL databases. The agenda of this video consists of three items, an introduction to the project that we're going to be using as the demo, the three different ways I like to categorize accessing databases, and actually the first part of this series of three videos, which will be the part one of the demo. The project that we're going to be using consists of building a web service. It's going to be using the INDB datasets, which specifically we're going to be using this name, basics file, which consists names that happen to be related to actors and actresses. And we're going to be storing that in our Postgres database, which is the last thing that I have right here. And we're going to be using, uh, like I said, a web service for accessing values using the ID of those records. There are three different ways I like to categorize accessing databases, uh, what I call plain SQL, ORM or ORM-like, SQL statements builders, and code generators. Specifically for this video, I'm going to be talking about the first item, which is plain, plain SQL or vanilla SQL, if you want to call it, which consists of using the standard library, using specifically the database SQL package, using what I think is the most popular package, the package for accessing Postgres, which is libpq, another really popular package called SQLX, and finally one of the more recent popular like uh, packages called PGX that I actually mentioned last time during the previous video. As well, next time, during the next video, I will be talking about GORM, POP, and a package for generating ORM-like types and methods called SQL Builder. And finally, the third video will consist of consist of, of uh, uh, sharing with you these two packages called C Squirrel and SQL C, which are used for generating SQL statements uh, using a flu fluent API and use, also use using um, a generator for generating static types that happen to be behind the scenes uh, used for accessing databases. All of these really cool packages. Now, let's jump into the first part of these demos. All the code that I'm going to be showing with you, or sharing with you, uh, the link is in the description as usual. There is a readme that includes specifically the steps that we're going to be needing. We need to use, uh, well, we don't have to use Docker, but ideally if you have a Docker already installed on your machine, you can use it for running the containers that we're going to be using for running the server, the specifically the Postgres server. There are instructions as well how to run it. If you notice right here, you can see that we have the instructions for running Docker. We have instructions for running the migration that I have here that is used for creating the table that is going to be including the names of the records. And more, speci more importantly, the last piece will be to load the data that we're going to be downloading from IMDB, the data set, load it into our local or remote database and so so we can use it and, and use it with the endpoints that the server is going to be defining all right so for now what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be just copying this this instruction i'm going to be just jumping into the next window and i'm going to be running the server so right now i have the server running in, you know using port 8080 and it's really ready for for the demo and whatnot so this file well, not this file. This demo contains five different fi four different files. The first one is called server.go that is used for defining the HTTP endpoints. And the way I'm defining these endpoints is all of them have this pattern. There is names. There is some sort of like a pre name. Well, let's call it a name that indicates the the package that represents. In this case, SQL indicates that it's using the database SQL package with the lead PQ uh, package using the standard library. Now, if I jump below right here, let me scroll down a little bit. If I jump below right here, you will notice that there is a SQL X. That one is using, as you may imagine already, SQL X, the SQL X package. And finally, right here, let me scroll up a little bit. We are using the PGX. And the important thing to notice if I compare the actual implementation of these three routes, or three dif these different handlers is that all of them sort of look the same. If you notice, the even the method that I use is the same, is using the same name. And the idea is that you can notice that in practice, 
it doesn't matter what package we're using what matters is how efficient using that package is going to be and efficient in the context of both time wise for the developers for us and also how efficient using that package is in the context of the performance of actually going to the database and pulling the records from the database or inserting records to the database and whatnot now with that being said let's jump into the first one which is using the sql uh, package uh, from the standard library which is the database sql package i'm seeing pick package a lot now in this case like i said i'm using libpq but also pgx supports the standard library methods so we can use this indistinctly and one thing i want to mention about specifically about libpq is that if you go to their website you can actually notice that they are recommending using pgx from from now on so if you're building a new project and you're planning to use postgres and this is your first time you're starting with this project then it's most likely that the idea or the recommendation will be to use pgx instead of using libpq the way it is is extremely pretty straightforward you open the database like any other server that you connect to and you query that record using a sql statement a plain old sql statement which is pretty straightforward it, it requires it requires a an argument which in this case is going to be used is the id of the record and is going to be defining uh, the columns that we need to get from the database and then we are going to be querying the record and then scan the value into at into some variables and passing in the values that we're receiving from the database into the actual result which is this scan method this is what is this this is what is this used for and um, the scan method and that's it we return back to the user uh, i mean we return that back to the client and the user sees the result in the uh, http endpoint in the response as a json object okay if we jump into let me close this one if you jump into sqlx the the steps are practically the same except for a few tiny improvements well i say not tiny but great improvements that the package added specifically and that will be this um, database or db fields json uh, struct tags that allow you to map automatically the field name with the column that is being used when querying the record so this end const means that the value of the result of the record for this specific column will be mapped into the field that is called end const in this struct let's say if i rename this to first and if i want to call it first what is going to happen is that now first is going to be mapped to this field and this saves a lot of time when you are building uh, queries because you don't have to go and explicitly indicate uh, the then the scan for each one of the fields like the way we're doing it here in the standard library and that that saves time and not only that sql x also has a, a helper that not only allows you to map strokes but also allows you to map slices or sets that are coming from the database so you can be searching i don't know um, selecting the first 10 or whatever however your query is being built and then you can map those results using this the sqlx helper and that will be a, a it will build a slice on the go side and you don't have to map those manually that's a really cool thing and it saves you a lot of time and again the way it is right here is this exactly the same because we are defining a struct uh, that happens to have the um, database fields or the struct fields we need to convert that those values back to the value that we're expecting right here which in this case is a name type a name struct type okay now finally we will be pgx with pgx the steps are practically similar the one thing that i use here is the uh, i'm using a pgx pool which if you are a little bit familiar with the way the the implementation of the standard library is that the standard library actually behind the scenes is using a pool of connections of the connections to the database but here is much more explicit and if you notice i'm not actually using 
the standard library directly and I mean you can say that it's sort of like the same but but if you remember in in the standard library query row which is right here um, not right here I'm sorry query query row the method name does not receive a context there is a concrete query row context function method that happens to receive a, a context so it looks kind of the same in in practice it's sort of the same but in reality the apis are inco incompatible but again there is a way to use the standard library methods using pgx as well the cool thing about pgx is because it's exclusive to postgres it supports a ton of types that happen to be only available for Postgres. It has more improvements that again are applicable only to Postgres and there are a few things that in practice allows you to perform better when accessing and, in, and inserting records or retrieving records from Postgres SQL databases. So that's the cool thing. Should you use SQL or SQLX or PGX? Well that's a question that I cannot give you an answer just yet but I think if you take these three options only you should evaluate what you're trying to do and then go from there what you're trying to to achieve to achieve and how much time do you have and and what are you trying to your goals to, what are your goals the immediate goals there are again in the next two videos i will show you some other ways to th do things but it's always important to keep in mind that if it's not possible to use the tools all the packages that are available already or the other packages that I will be mentioning there is always a way to do things using plain SQL which should be enough for most of the things and with that I cover the first item of our three sections or sub items or sub videos that I will be discussing with you in the near future so yeah you know thank you for watching and keep it up